In 2021, I put out a pretty solid video about one of my favorite OVAs of all time, Gunsmith Cats. Gunsmith Cats came out in the mid-90s, but it was a successor to a failed initial series known as Riding Bean. In all reality here, Riding Bean is really just the 80s counterpart to Gunsmith Cats. This was supposed to be a full-length TV series and ultimately a franchise, but all that amassed from Toshiba EMI and AIC was a 48-minute OVA and a cancelled manga that was jumbled up and thrown into the end of the Gunsmith Cat's last volume. Apparently, there were differences between Kanichi Sanada, creator of the series, and Toshiba EMI, and that's what caused the TV series to fold, and that's where the time and the shift in interest had led Sanada to come up with Gunsmith Cat's. Today, let's ride into Riding Bean and see whether or not it's worth watching. Gunsmith Cats, which this is my last time addressing it, was actually the reverse of Riding Bean in the sense of Rally and May pursuing criminals in their show. In Riding Bean, it still takes place in Chicago and Bean Bandit and his partner, which no one really knows if it's supposed to be the same Rally Vincent, but his partner Rally Vincent, they're framed for kidnapping a wealthy man's daughter and they become target criminals for this story. The usual, the ones who frame them, are out for ransom money, so our protagonists get dragged into this crazy police chase for like half the episode. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a mid-tier show all in all, but it does have some redeeming qualities like a good soundtrack, which I think is actually above average for something like this, cool action and odd yet entertaining scenes. No, no, I still haven't had a shower today. I'm filthy. Then I'll clean it up. Hey, hey, you. It's okay. I'm great at it. Simmer always praises me. Stop it! <laughs> Hello, Carrie, is what I want to say, but... Um, uh, what? I wonder if you're not being overly hospitable to our hostage. Uh-oh. You saw that? Oh! oh. Uh, don't you try to put one over on me. Oh, you, you, you little slut. Stop it. I'm sorry, I won't do any more. I promise, so please. If you do anything like this again. Please stop it. I'll obey your every word, mistress. Come on, we're leaving. Get your stuff together. A lot of the plot consists of characters wearing bodysuits and masks to cover up their identities and confuse each other. And then it ends off with, like I said earlier, a 20-minute police chase and not unlike certain episodes of a certain show. What stands out from other shows like this is that Bean isn't really an average human being as he can tap into a weird strength that can even prevent a bullet from killing him. There isn't really much for me to say here in terms of plot and characters and things like that. I mean, it's barely an hour and it's not even really the greatest thing in the world. But I will say here that the animation in certain action scenes do really get to me and I really enjoy it. But yeah. Now as far as watching this in Japanese or English, I'm only open to watching these kind of anime in dub. So the few times I watched this over the years was in the dub. I find the selection of voice actors to fit perfectly, but the delivery or the quality of acting tends to be off in certain sections. Now it's been said that Riding Bean is one of the cornerstones for anime home video in the West and a lot of people who I've talked to that are older, that was there at the time and I've even seen videos over the years where people always mention Riding Bean to be the first anime on VHS that they seen in video rental stores and shelves back in the early 90s when barely half a shelf was all the anime these stores had to choose from as far as fans go. All in all, man, Riding Bean is fun, and I would certainly recommend you watch it. Remember, it is mid-tier. Don't come into this looking for something crazy, but yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> 